once again, in the words of Rich Goins, there are no rules. Alright, here's part two of my review of the Ultimate Ultimate 95. Alright, um, long story short, it's definitely not the best UFC. Uh, <coughs> it's historically significant, again, in a lot of ways. Um, the promotion of the UFC says goodbye to a lot of familiar faces. I'll get to that in a second. Um, <coughs> you know, um, it has a like it had an all veteran field. It was uh, one of the, the Art Davy productions uh, once more by Vidmark. Mm. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, uh, uh, back in 1995, uh, basically, the UFC was still in its infancy, and, um, it was the second appearance of Tank, uh, Barland was there, uh, Dan Severin, Oleg Taktorov, Marco Huas, Keith Hackney, David Beneteau, Steve Jenham, you know, um, there's probably some other guys, too, I, I should have the name, but, um, uh, no alternates were called the, during the entire match, um, the first round bouts all went by pretty quick, with the exception of Huas versus Hackney. Um, uh, Steve Jenham gets beat by Tank pretty quickly, you know, by having his head bent back up against the octagon. Uh, the, the, so the UFC 3 champion was the only champion to not make it past the first round. Uh, like, Taktarov, uh, Severin, and Huas all also make pretty quick work of their opponents. I find it kind of interesting that, um, uh, Dan Severin, uh, submitted Paul Varland in one minute, and it took, um, Marco Huas 13 minutes to do the same. But, um, uh, uh, like, um, Oleg Taktarov that night would give, uh, Huas his first, uh, would give Marco Huas his first uh, loss. He would, like, lose a decision. Um, but that's where the, the other problem with this would be. <clears throat> the uh, after the first round, the second round fights and the finals, uh, they all go the time limit. They are they are all won by judges' decisions, which um uh, is a bit tough to watch. You know, you could say, because um uh well Severin at that time, even, as good as he was, he was unable to finish um his opponents. Uh, but the, the strength of the wrestler was still prominent there, because you can you see it today on the UFC. Um, having great wrestling skills is the key to succeed in the octagon, but he still couldn't finish Tank or Taktarov. Yeah, he would um, have... Uh, it would like a, Taktarov would have two rematches that night, first against Benito. He would beat him with a heel hook. And, um, and um, this would actually, unfortunately, be... Um, the last UFC appearance of uh, Keith Hackney, of course, Steve Jenham, David Beneteau. Um, but Beneteau would come by in UFC 3, um, who else would also be gone, and even Oleg Taktarov would be gone from the UFC after, this, after um, the Ultimate Ultimate 95. And um, that's, um, that's most of the, the event, uh, like in a nutshell. <coughs> um, else being the patient counterfighter that he was, Gave old, like it was kind of fun, like because um the best fight of the night, in my opinion, um well, well mostly clearly was uh, Huas versus Taktarov, because uh, they were both very very much counter fighters. But um uh, most of the reason that um Oleg won was uh because he was the aggressor and he at least had two submission attempts during their um entire 18 minute round. Um, Huas, I think, when he got a good look at the blood pouring from the cuts all over his opponent's face. He figured that the judges would see that and give him the decision. He was really upset about losing the decision, and um, which uh, as he felt that he should have won the fight, but uh, the decision was pretty justified. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> things around here are pretty good otherwise. Um, and in the rematch, once again, Severin tried to make, uh, mostly, uh, the, the best thing about him was that he was able to submit Varlins, yeah, but his conditioning was mostly what enabled him to win, because, um, he kept it, he kept, um, his wrestling skills working throughout the entire time, but, uh, he was kind of starting to become a symbol for what was wrong with the UFC. As a, if he, if he developed a real striking game, or any kind of real submission game, 
Like a, he had Tank's back for the better part of 18 minutes and couldn't finish him. Instead, he was more content to just slap him in the back of the head. But, um, uh, but unfortunately, Oleg also um, made some mistakes during the tournament. Uh, he fought kind of one-dimensionally, like he would roll for a, a leg, then he would roll for a leg, and then he would roll for a leg again and keep on attacking to try to do his trademark rolling knee bar. I saw his fight with Joe Charles. It was really good. Once again, he uses his rolling knee bar, and even though that's a great way to finish a fight that you don't see nowadays in the UFC, um, um, he did kind of rely on it on it a bit too much, and it, it didn't work on Severin or Huas. And, uh, yes, Severin was the only guy that could beat uh, Taktarov that night, and um, he ended up winning his second tournament um, for... his second tournament um, in a row which hadn't been done since Horse Gracie left the UFC. So that's all for now, okay? This is Flickfest Wizard saying make it a great day or else. I wonder what's for dinner.